guys came out with a ton of news today. And let's start with the piece about you identifying a new potential drug that may have activity against this novel coronavirus. Um, how does it look like it works? Um, and when could we potentially be seeing it in people and the first results from that trial? Thank you, Meg. It's so great to be back with you today to share some positive news in these uh, difficult times. Um, as you noted, we are mounting the battle against COVID-19 on multiple fronts. You asked me to particularly comment on the data we have released on our treatment. It's a drug that counter the expansion of the virus, and we envision if successful would be given early in the disease process when patients may be admitted to the hospital. We have now been able to confirm potent activity against the virus causing COVID-19 in preclinical screening. And we are pleased to say that the last time I spoke to you, we anticipated to be in clinical studies before end of the year. Through the dedicated work from our team, we can now say we think we'll be in Q3, just a few months from today. In the third quarter, you're also giving a timeline for when you plan to hopefully start human trials of your vaccine candidate with your partner BioNTech um, by the end of April. Can you tell us what you see the timeline looking like for a vaccine? You know, we consistently hear 18 months. Um, when do you think a vaccine could be ready and how do you see it being used initially? Will it be healthcare workers, high risk groups? How will that play out? Yeah, that's a great question, and I think that's the second piece of really good news today. As we finalized our work, in initial work with BioNTech and the agreement that we announced today on this new technology for vaccines to viral diseases, we remain on track to start clinical studies end of this month. But really the additional piece of news that I think is so important is that if successful through the clinical studies and approval by regulatory authorities, we are now in our timeline uh, able to project that we could potentially supply millions of vaccine doses by the end of 2020. So this is much faster than the kind of original projection of 18 months, and it's almost half the time. And why is that possible? I think it's this dream team between a cutting edge technology company and Pfizer that has for such a long time been a pioneering leader in vaccines, taking them from the research lab to bedside and to uh, providing many millions and in some cases billions of doses. And this is really the team that has this mix of knowing the end game and being te technologically cutting edge. And I think that's has helped us to see an opportunity to move faster than normally. And I should say, we also have got um, some really good dialogue with the experts in the field, including regulatory experts and colleagues at NIH. So we are trying to operate like a one team here. Well, I also have to ask you about something that wasn't part of your update today, but the LA Times had a story a couple days ago um, where it mentioned that Viagra, a Pfizer drug that's well known, is being tested by Chinese scientists for its potential use against COVID-19. And that's because it has the ability to um, open the blood vessels. Uh, it's a vasodilator. Does Pfizer see promise in potentially using Viagra to treat this disease? You know, we welcome uh, creative uh, physicians that are using drugs uh, in a repurposed method, drugs that we know are safe and have been used in so many patients, but maybe for a new indication. And I think we would like to learn more uh, how this can play out in a larger study if this group wants to pursue that. And we're pleased to see that not just uh, Viagra or Revascu that has been used for lung disease, it's the same uh, active compound, but also drugs like azithromycin have been pursued an antibiotic with potential antiviral activity. And we are really supporting that as a fast response to look at drugs that are already approved. And we are pursuing, as the press release said, also immune modulators like cellulans that could be useful. I just wanted to punctuate that the second question on the vaccine 
is so important because in the end, if we want to return life to more normal, in the way we defined normal, that means that we need to protect millions and hundreds of millions of people from being targets of this vicious virus. And it's only a vaccine in the end that can return us to a more normal life as it used to be. Although these um, medicines that are now coming out are so important for every patient coming into the hospital to have a different choice than just um, spending time in the hospital. So we welcome right. that uh, creativity very much.